uh, Babo Braulio Castellanos. He's a well-known dude from Florence 13. He was a, he was a member of the Mexican mafia and he just recently, and he was doing a life sentence. So the CDC released him on compassionate, uh, Mm -hmm. compassionate release because of a medical, a medical situation in May. And what about a month later he died. So I guess the CDC, the doctors of the CDC knew they knew he was going, he was going to die shortly. So they let him out and, um, he was the one that was very instrumental in the the truce between the East Coast Crips and the Florence Thirteens. In fact, he's the one that started the whole thing. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. You know, I had heard his name. You know, I didn't actually know much about him, um, but I had heard his name over the years, man. And and, I, and like you said, I did hear that he was influential, and in, you know, and in trying to get that uh that beef, you know, uh uh um, you know, I ain't gonna call it settled, but you know, they came to agreement that they wasn't going, you know. Be, be so active with it you know what i mean and and if he definitely did that man i mean you know to be honest with you that's 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 a win-win you know so um i i never can go against that man when somebody talk about bringing peace together between some rival you know neighborhoods you know and uh man that's 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 really what's up it need to be more people out there that's instrumental and you know and i know it's a lot of bad blood and a lot of bloodshed over the last 50 years man but at the same time you know man we got to start looking at and, and, and waking up and, you know, and trying to, you know, bridge this gap, man, you know, and try to do the same thing he did. Yeah, man. I was hoping that this was going to create like a whole movement between Mexican gangs and black gangs in L.A. Because after that truce, when, when that truce took place, I reached out to Bobo because he had a he had a burner phone in his cell at Solano prison. And um, I asked him if he could do some other truces. So eventually we did the truce between the neighborhood Pyrus, Queen Street and Inglewood with the I-13s because they had been going at it for I don't know how long they've been going at it. But, um, hey, we did the same thing with the that the East Coasts and the Florences did. And uh, he made that happen, which was incredible. And then once I, once that happened, I was like, oh, we're about to bring all these all these sets together. And, you know, it was a trip. There's a lot of people was upset saying that. How can you bring black and Mexican gangs? And this was something that little Doc Thorne from East Coast went through. How can you how can you even start a truce between a Mexican and a black when you still got black on black conflict still going on? Well, you got to look at it like this. You know what I mean? Sometimes the way your neighborhood is bordered, it may not be bordered with just one gang. It may be bordered. You know, you you have multiple enemies when you out there. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, uh, you may be able to bridge the gap between an enemy on one of your borders, but but not quite with the enemy on the, the next border. You know, but at the same time, man, when you get to talk about saving lives and saving kids lives, it, it, it really don't matter. You know, um, so if you was able to line it up, you know, with the you know, Mexican gangs first, you know, and um, and get that truce done, you know, and, and you know, m- you can guys can drive to their neighborhood to go to the supermarket or, you know, they can do the same and things of that nature. They mama can come over and go to the bank over in your neighborhood and things of that nature, man. Then that's all for the good. So at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people think black and brown, but it's sometimes homie is 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 man on man, you know. So if you could stop some 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 killing, stop some violence, you know, coming from any any um other you know race or 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 ethnicity then um shit that's all for the good man yeah and you know i'm I'm not um i'm I'm not like naive to to think that oh babo um babo was doing this completely out of the goodness of his heart maybe he was maybe he wasn't it didn't really matter to me because he was doing it and he was doing something that nobody else in the mexican mafia was doing so uh you know I, i i commend him for what he did um in 2019 and uh he completely supported it and here's another thing that you know i had a lot of conversations with babo one of the conversations i had and this goes back to the feds he, and i and i think this is what really motivated him to want to do this truce he said the fbi came to his cell in solano and and said that the conflict between the east coasts and the florences is just getting out of control there's too many innocent people dying on both sides because we don't often talk about this but a lot of times you don't get your man you you get the, you know the bystander or right, you, right, right, or you right. think he's a crip but he ain't a crip or you thought he was an essay and he wasn't so the, right so the feds took photos of all these victims and and to his cell and said this is your fault man 
And I think he realized that if he didn't clean, if he didn't stop this, they were going to reindict him and he would end up being in Florence, Colorado, like they'd done to, to so many other inmates. So he actually told me he enjoyed living his life in Solano and he did not want to go to to the feds. He actually feared being sent to Florence, Colorado, man. Have you ever heard crazy stories about what life is like in Florence, Colorado? Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? A big homie, a uh, big age from Lewis Park. He was over there in uh, <clears throat> Florence in ADX, you know, over there with Larry Hoover and them, man. You know, so I got to sit down with him and uh, he told me plenty of stories about it. You know what I mean? I believe uh, the homie from East Coast I was in Victorville with, he was down there for a minute, you know, and uh, and uh, so, yeah, I heard dudes that was personally down there, man. You know, and the thing about it is, like you say, when you're doing, you know, a stretch, man, you know, you don't want to do your time like that, you know. But at the same time, I, I ain't going to use the term to say he was scared. I, I must use the term Alex and say he just didn't want to have to, you know what I mean, go down there and deal with that bullshit when he was comfortable where he was at, you know, because it's clear this dude was a was a, was a reputable dude, you know what I mean? So, you know, um, you know, uh, of course, who want to go down there in the cold and, and, and deal with that and your family still in California and things of that nature. But if he was able to really pull some strings and pull this together, man, then, hey, you know, that's what's up. Yeah, I, de I definitely wasn't using the word fear in the literal way, just the, the the idea of being there, because I know for a fact this dude feared nothing throughout his whole life. You know, he already established, proved that that, uh, you know, he was with the business from day one. He was sentenced to life back in 1988. So uh, I use it in a in in a non literal sense, but um, I would I just wish more people like Bobo would step up, um, more people because we can't talk about Black Brown. You know, there's a lot of people on the internet talking about oh I'm, I support Black Brown, I support Black Brown, but the only way you can even make a dent on this Black Brown is tapping in with people from from prison on the on the Mexican side because it, it ain't gonna happen without the support from the guys in prison. And I don't I don't see any of these guys that support Black Brown tapping in with anybody in prison to get the movement going. No, no doubt, but it ain't an easy task to do. You know, it's something that's a tedious operation. It's a tedious, you know, uh, uh, a technical thing that you know you gotta navigate through. And the thing about it is, you know, Everybody out here living their life, Alex. Everybody out here, you know, now it's a me, me, me. You know what I mean? It's not about the homie no more. You know, we grew up, bro, you know, your your homie was your brother. And, and, and you showed that because you put your life on the line for him. You know, now it's just the demographics is different. You know what I mean? And the... And the uh, it's, it's not like people care like that anymore. They say they do, but they don't show it. They don't send their own homies $15 in jail. You know what I mean? They don't get they don't make a list and say, okay, I got a hundred bucks. I'm gonna send five people twenty dollars. You know, they don't even do that with their own with their family. So, you know, to try to get the thing going with the with the with the with the truth or the or with the brown, you know, I, I get it. It's a it's a tedious thing, but like you say, uh some people out of they don't care enough. They say they do, but they don't, you know what I mean? So uh, but it could it could be done if somebody just you know really took the measures and pushed that push and fought that fault fight that fight but you know at the same time like i say man everybody claim to be living their lives and don't don't care like they used to yeah man i actually reached out to bobo on the 18 street conflict with the bloods and uh he said all right let's make it happen and i tapped in with two of the shot callers over there i don't want to say shot callers but let me say two of the more influential guys in the jungles um who were both uh just both passed on us little bop got killed and um and um kaz died and these two guys actually came to a meeting uh, and we talked about hey are you guys down to end the beef with 18th street because it started in the jungle so if the jungles wasn't on board then it wasn't going to happen and we got to having a few conversations man and then you know it, COVID hit and now we bought we lost both of the dudes from the jungles man that were the, the influential voices over there but it doesn't mean it can't happen, man. Hopefully, maybe some of those guys in prison are listening and say, hey, you know, I want to step up the way Bobo did and uh, bring bring some some peace to some of these neighborhoods in Los Angeles, man. And if and if you do, if you if you're down with it, reach out, reach out to me. Give me a call and I'll definitely uh, do my best to make it happen.